Hi, thanks. Thanks a lot for the intro. Let's, okay, now it's working. Okay, uh, so hi everyone, good morning. Um, so my, a few words about uh, me. Let me check the clicker. Yeah, everything is working. So hi, uh, my name is Lampros. Um, I would like to say a few words about me. So first of all, my academic background is on, uh, I have a bachelor in computer science and also a master in business administration. I also have around 10 plus years of experience in bringing digital products to life from various positions, either technical or management ones. Currently, uh, I'm enterprise agile coach in Vodafone, responsible for the agile transformation of the organization, and also I'm an accredited uh, business agility instructor by Institute of Agile. So all these things made me um, understand my passion about collaboration and how uh, we can improve the collaboration and how we can make the collaboration more efficient uh, between individuals and between teams and how that, uh, how, how a good collaboration can actually uh, help teams deliver uh, astonishing outcomes. The next thing is that generally I try to be simple because I strongly believe there is a lot of complexity around us, right? And uh, the last but not least, I'm uh, fascinated about experimentation and how we can create a, an, an environment when teams can experiment and can learn from their successes and, and from their failures. Also in the previous conversation, you discussed a lot about the learning culture, so kudos for that. I really like that comment. A few words about Vodafone. We are a large organization, almost um, 45 billion of euros in annual revenue operating in 22 uh, countries. Uh, we are the third uh, telecommunications operator in Europe. So, as you can tell, a very big organization. And our service and our contribution to the uh, society is uh, telecommunications, right? A highly commoditized product has been around for a few decades. Um, we as Vodafone also have a lot of complexity, uh, around 300 application and 3,500 uh, servers. This number might be uh, changed as we speak because, you know, things uh, change. And I'm here today to talk about uh, how large organizations such as Vodafone uh, innovate, right? But before I uh, go a little um, a step deeper in uh, our innovative uh, practices, I would like to discuss a little bit uh, broader uh, in what uh, innovation actually is. So, generally speaking, uh, and when I'm discussing it with my friends and colleagues, when we're discussing about innovation, we uh, think about uh, a new product, right? A new service, a new feature, something that's going to be awesome, something that's going to be released to the customer, something that's going to hit the mark, it's going to bring a lot of money to the company, and everyone is going to be extremely happy uh, about our innovative product or service. Well, yes, however, it might be a little bit a uh, narrow perspective of how we view innovation, right? And we as Vodafone also do not view innovation only through new products and new services. We, and also according to Dublin's innovation framework, there are 10 different types of, of innovation, 10 different uh, dimensions that and um, organization can truly innovate in. So does anyone uh, remember a few years back uh, the telecommunication industry has the next big thing which was 5G, right? Does anyone remember Vodafone's uh, marketing campaign, awareness campaign? Anyone that remembers it, please raise their hand. In order to jog a little bit the memory, it was about the blind biker that was cabled up with uh, some electronics and some uh, material, and he was um, providing instructions by his coach in a different room. Does anyone ring a bell? Yeah, great. Okay, now that I took the memory more hand were reason. So that, according to our industry uh, statistics, was a huge success, right? Well, uh, what we did compared to the uh, rest of the organizations that were trying to, let's say, promote and create that awareness of 5G is that um, everyone else tried to explain 
what, what is 5G, what are the benefits, what's, uh, what's the pros, what's the cons, how um, it can be uh, utilized by the customers. Well, we uh, tried to follow a different approach, right? We took 5G and put it into actual practice. And we showcased the world and our customers how 5G can literally help uh, another person another pressure another person improve uh, their life right in in their profession so that was you know one approach to innovation and later on i'm going to discuss uh, I'm, I'm i we're going to deep dive into um another um, innovative product that we uh, are very proud of before diving into that i would like to discuss a little bit about the context, right? Because every organization needs to innovate. However, you need to have uh, the right context. You need to have the right framework for innovation. So for us, that context and that framework is agility. And uh, Vodafone uh, is currently undergoing its digital and agile transformation, where we are trying, we are not there yet. We have a lot of steps to take, but I guess it's a journey, right? Every transformation is a journey. And we are trying to transform from a waterfall organization to being an, an agile organization. And agility for us can be summarized into two pillars, right? The first, the first pillar is how we can improve collaboration between teams, how we can improve collaboration within the organization. So we try to remove uh, the organizational silos, the departmental silos, the functional silos, in order to increase the collaboration. And also, um, we, in the process, we created cross-functional teams in order to bring all those people from uh, various backgrounds and from different expertises together in order to collaborate and uh, try to create something beautiful. The second thing was, is um, how we put the customer at the epicenter, right? How we um, provide the right environment for our teams to be creative, to take risks, to fail, to learn from those failures or from those successes. And also we try to make our processes leaner in order to improve our time to market, right? In order to deliver more stuff and to our, towards our customers in a more frequent way. So, as a result, we, um, I would like to introduce you Toby, for anyone that's not uh, aware. Toby is our uh, beloved uh, chatbot. Actually, if uh, any of you would like to try it on their phone and log in and um, browse through our mobile application or through our website, you can literally chat with uh, Toby. Because, to because Toby uh, understands human language and he will reply to you back as, uh, he will try to reply back to you as a human being. Obviously, we are not ChatGPT. Oops, sorry about that. Obviously, we are not ChatGPT yet about the AI Summit. It should be very interesting. Uh, kudos again for uh, that effort. And um, additionally, the next thing is that Toby's continuously learning, right? Dialogue per dialogue. Uh, he's gathering new data. He understands better what the user and the customer is saying, how to respond. Um, so he becomes even more sophisticated uh, as we go. Another cool uh, and fun fact is Toby has a personality, right? He likes to be communicative. He likes to better understand what your problem is and how, uh, uh, it, and, and how it can find the best solution for you. And if it finds the solution, it's very direct about providing that solution to your uh, problem. So that's how we in Vodafone try to innovate uh, in the customer experience, right? We try to find an alternative way of uh, innovating customer experience by providing an alternative channel or an alternative service or an alternative product. So, a couple of takeaways if I want to wrap up my presentation and I would like to keep uh, four things in, in total. First of all is don't ride the hype train of being in the lab and try to 
uh, come up with the next big uh, innovative product that's going to be uh, the next big thing and everyone is going to, do, to discuss about it. Um, try experimenting with different types of, the, of, of innovation and different dimensions in innovation. Innovation can come from many, in, in many different ways. Second thing is that uh, for us, agility and any other framework that uh, you are using can act as a great catalyst and as a great enabler for your organization to experiment and uh, to also put the customer at the epicenter and gather that uh, valuable feedback in order to continuously improve your product or your uh, innovative service. The, the third thing is that big organizations also innovate, right? And they need to innovate. And big organizations uh, ride the train of um, experimenting with all types of innovation and all dimensions of, of innovation. There is not only uh, one silver bullet. And lastly, but not least, you all know uh, um, is that innovation is the, end, the destination because at the end you need to have a successful product that works, that, customer, that, that our customers love, but it is also the journey. And don't forget that even Toby didn't uh, make it from day one, right? I vaguely remember when we started the POC a few years back, we, uh, Toby was just a POC, but we immediately released it to our customers in order to gather that valuable feedback. And innovation is, and innovative products and services are evolving and are progressing. They are not static. It's not an uh, once-off, um, it's not an, an once-off moonshot, let's say. You start with something and then you iterate and iterate until um, you reach that uh, special place. That's all for... Sorry, <laughs> that's all from my side. So, uh, thank you very much. I know. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't expect to be that short, right? <laughs> it's good, but you have three questions, so probably we'll have time great, for all of them. Great, great. Uh, hopefully, uh, we will have some uh, questions because uh, I wanted to fill the time. Yeah. Great, so. Uh, Here you questions. go with a clicker. Great. Uh, cool. So, first question. Yeah. Has your transformation from waterfall to agile been completed? And could you name the biggest value you got from going agile? Mm -hmm. So, not completed yet. And <laughs> honestly speaking, I'm not quite sure when it's going to be completed. I mean, some there are some uh, business cases out there that say 10 years and something. Uh, we are only on the fourth year. So, uh, not yet completed for sure. And uh, what are the biggest challenges or benefits? No, benefit. Benefits, yeah. The, is that it provided uh, the framework for um, innovation, right? With this short cycle, short iteration. It provided us with a, a solid way of experimenting with the customer, bringing the customer to the epicenter, and uh, continuously releasing products. Let me share a personal story, let's say, for example, when I uh, joined uh, Vodafone, we released software, I'm going to say it and I'm going, and probably it's going to, to shock you, uh, we released software probably uh, three times per year, yes, three times per year. So, <laughs> nowadays we have three releases per month, so imagine that this is a huge um, uh, benefit, let's say, of, of agility. I hope I covered this, this question. Cool. Yeah, yeah. And there are lots coming, so yeah. I'll just go by the first one, depending on the time we have. So, yeah. it's interesting, next one is, it's interesting that you mentioned Toby as a good example, because mm -hmm. talking to a bot is usually a bad customer experience. What metrics, I don't know, that's kind of subjective though, but anyway, what <laughs> metrics are you using exactly. for Toby and what means, what are your KPIs for success, what success means for Toby? For Toby, yeah. So, um, I tend to agree with your comment. That is quite subjective. It depends on, you know, because uh, generally... I don't know if there is research. There might be research that shows that talking to a bot is a bad experience. I'm not aware of it, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, me neither. Anyway, uh, so um, the, the metrics for success. So we have what we call the uh, containment rate. So the containment rate uh, is 
is one of the metrics, and it basically measures. So if a customer firstly creates a dialogue or interacts with Toby, will Toby be able to hold that customer uh, throughout all the uh, th throughout his um, throughout his problem and actually provide a solution that the customer is happy with? So I, I don't know if it makes sense, but but how you retain the customer in Toby and the user does not simply uh, close the app or close the Toby dialog and calls the call center to find a solution for his uh, problem. So that's, so that's one uh, metric. The second one is, you know, uh, how satisfied the customer is with the interaction, right, NPS at or... At the end, all right, Yeah, NPS yeah, yeah, score. at the end okay, through cool. surveys and what to improve and uh, what... Uh, and, um, yeah, I'm going to, yeah, cool. I'm going to summarize uh, these two, yeah. Uh, the next question, which I think you just touched upon, is what what was what is that the actual percentage uh, of customers that are you know handled completely? I guess the um, the question means by Toby, and what's the percentage that ends to an agent? Mm, yeah, that's that's a very good question. So uh, we we have to think it um, into uh, two dimensions, right? Because uh, you know, as as a telecommunication industry, you might not always serve digital savvy customers, right? So you have the, uh, the full customer base that might not be digital savvy, that might not be digital savvy. It is my father, my mother who, you know, trust me. No matter how much I try, they, <laughs> they are not so good with technology. Uh, I, I, I heard the laugh, so I think someone uh, <laughs> understood my uh, comment. Um, nevertheless, um, I wouldn't say it's um, for, for the digital savvy customers, it's not 50-50, um, but um, I would say it's approaching, uh, let's say, a 40-60%. But like I said, Toby okay. is uh, still learning and still evolving as a, as a product, cool. as uh, a service, yeah. Great, okay, I'll go the next two because we have only three minutes. And one is, it's upvoted, so I'll go for it. I think it's very interesting. Uh, having a poll in the room uh, about the people that think a chatbot experience is good or not. So let's raise your hands for those that think a chatbot experience is bad. Okay. Which is kind of the minority. So I guess we answered that. <laughs> cool. And, uh, or, you know, if the, the rest. and the last question is, are yeah. you working on any new initiatives around innovation? Something about excitement, exciting in development, because Toby is interesting, but it's just a chatbot at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And I guess probably the question is that chatbots probably are going to be a bit a commodity right now with ChatGPT and everything, so yeah. it won't be considered. It's going to be the status quo probably going yeah. forward. Yeah, yeah. So if uh, you can share anything that yeah, you're yeah. working so, right now. So um, I'm not going to share the uh, innovation part, but I'm going to share the way we. Uh, prioritize and handle innovation, right? In order to give a broad understanding about uh, what's coming next. So when it comes to our um, enterprise portfolio of products or services or, uh, you know, new features that uh, we would like to uh, provide to uh, our customers, we are very careful about uh, dedicating a specific investment budget uh, for new type of stuff, so for big risks, let's say, that might or might not work. That's actually how uh, Toby started, right? It was part of an uh, uh, investment bucket uh, in our uh, enterprise portfolio for new stuff. So uh, we, we have this investment bucket um, every year, quite regularly, right? We are very... Um, we are very focused on having that particular uh, budget for uh, for innovation, and certain things, you know, and certain things might pop up, and we might experiment, and some things might uh, actually work, and we con and we will continue investing on them, and some things might not work, so we stop them, drop right? Them. Yeah, so we drop them. So. I'm not quite sure about what the next big thing uh, is and what the next innovative thing is, uh, but you know, it's a matter of uh, we are experimenting and if it's going to be the next innovative thing, only time will tell. Great, thanks yeah. a lot. Thank you.